morning students this morning what we are going to take up is a modern type of poem a poem that has a, a, that is dedicated to artists from all segments artists from all segments it's a in form it's an old originally the poem was a uh, uh, published in the year 1874 and this is found in the work of Arthur for sure the sea in the collection that was published in 1874 uh, under the name music and the moonlight music and the moonlight all right so when this particular poem was uh, initially published it had uh, nine stanzas nine stanzas but uh, uh, later on when it was uh, included in the palgrove's uh, uh, collection right now palgrove is uh, uh, an anthology of poems uh, quite renowned when it was uh, included in that collection collection of uh, palgrove it was reduced to three stanzas it was abridged to three stanzas okay so that is the uh, that's how this come about and originally the the poem had the title in the first edition the poem had the title as he published it originally in the year 1874 in the collection called music and moonlight uh, he it had it was the first poem in that collection and it had the title ode all right now and in form this is uh, an ode as well because uh, it it is a uh, uh, it's basically Uh, addressing, addressing a person or a subject or a thing or an idea. Now that is a, a poem that addresses that it's a, which is a direct address to a living or non-living thing or an idea is known as an ode. All right, and this is a type of poem that was popularized especially by. by uh, the romantic poets for instance shelley and keats so you have so many of those quotes for instance by uh, shelley called the skylark to the skylark and then you have the poem by uh, the ode to west wind and uh, then we have the ode on the grecian horn and by keats and so on so when it said poems it's all addressed to uh, uh, a person or a thing now this is uh, the form is correct and uh, which is uh, uh, justified uh, and the title itself as a more or so it qualifies why because this is a direct address to artists of all segments all right various segments starting with now let's say it it's uh, uh, it includes uh, the artist uh, the painter painting those who does painting those who work as uh, those who are writers those who are poets those who work in feature films those who uh, uh, are musicians and uh, including the rock or the pop and uh, all this kind of or uh, reggae all this kind of uh, variety of uh, poems are in uh, artists artisans are included including sculptors anyone anyone who is uh, dedicated his life to art is included in it and therefore it does not and uh, one thing is as you read through the poem you will find uh, that it uh, has a direct appeal to artists across the different realms because uh, it does not mention a particular form of 
form or apply and therefore it equally applies to artists across the globe and across different segments all right this gives uh, therefore um, an all encompassing definition of art it it art as an all encompassing form so the musicians the writers the poets the sculptors the painters everyone is included in this and uh, it has a wide appeal and one of the greatest things some of the things that have happened in sin is if you look at that the first sentence we are the music makers for instance all right we are the we are the music makers did you see that we are the music makers and we are the the dreamers of dreams we are the dreamers of dreams and such wonderful lines as a uh, one of the uh, phrases that uh, that has its origin from this poem are uh, we are the movers and the shakers the phrase movers and shakers has its origin with this particular poem and it's widely used and uh, uh, in the uh, in the 89th academy awards for instance uh, the line said uh, we are the music makers and dreamers of dreams were played so you uh, you see how much influence this particular poem has on the uh, the artist life and uh, uh, the field of art okay now we shall uh, uh, get to the theme of the the this particular poem what is what is the poem speak here what is the theme that he is talking about he is talking about the transformative power of art he talks about the transformative power of art so he talks that about the about the great capacity of artists to raise an empire or to tumble down an empire because what are they they are movers and shakers they can move the world and they can shake the world as well all right they can construct as well as destroy all right okay now before we go into this let me tell you the this transformative power of art is a great great thing that uh, we often we often forget to understand the great art is is uh, it is it's, it's uh, absolutely true that uh, some of this uh, some of this dynasty is fell because of the work of artisans it is true that some of the new ideologies and new ideas developed because of the the work of artists and it is true that a, a type of government went out and a new type of government came into existence because of the work of artists so the idea the artist is a revolutionary who can move the people inspire the people and to uh, throw out uh, something a social stigma or a society that is outdated and to create a new one all right so the artist has the possibility the artist as a mover and shaker is uh, capable of moving and shaking the world and uh, possibility of a building a new one so what does he basically do he brings dynamicity he brings dynamic dynamicity to the otherwise static world that's what he does all right 
So they are capable of building and rebuilding new cities, settlements, civilizations by arousing radical thoughts and feelings and realization in the minds of people. I shall give you a few examples. I shall give you a, a few examples to prove how important, how important the work of artists are, how influential they are, how powerful they are. Okay? Now one of the mother of, let's say, all revolutions is known as the the French Revolution. You study in your history. What happened in the French Revolution? When you study the French Revolution that happened in 1789. This happened in 1789 and lasted for nine years. 1799. Alright? And uh, the French Revolution happened in 89 and in 99 Napoleon Bonaparte he comes and takes over or uh, removes the impacts of this uh, revolution. Once again uh, uh, kind of a uh, 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 re-establishes or tries to establish a monarchy once again. That's what happened. Now what happened in the French Revolution? Now you learn the causes of French Revolution and one of the causes of the French Revolution was the influence of all those writers and thinkers of those times. You must have heard of uh, the, uh, the great writers uh, of the time like Voltaire and Rousseau and so on the, who had great influence and what happened as a result? As a result of this revolution, and uh, they are usually termed as a philosophers. The people who brought about great changes, the philosophers. Right? Or the philosophers. They were writers who influenced uh, this new way of thinking. One of the causes, I'm not saying it is the main cause, but it is, it was. It was uh, very much a part of a, uh, uh, as a cause for the French Revolution. So what happened? A system of government was thrown out. Monarchy came to an end with the with the storming of Bastion. With the storming of Bastion, the monarchy came to an end. Right? And a kind of revolutionary government, a modern type of, uh, um, let's say, democracy was a set up or a democratic pattern. Then things happened, this was the first traffic. So, a system of government, how the writers can influence them. I'll give you another example of uh, and what were their crimes. What were the three crimes that, uh, that was uh, common during the time of the French Revolution? There were just three words. Liberty, equality, fraternity. Fraternity means brotherhood. Alright? The French Revolution was basically based on three, three concepts. They wanted liberty, freedom, they wanted equality, and therefore they wanted fraternity, brotherhood. Alright? So they, they wanted to set up an egalitarian state, overthrowing the monarchy, who was living a very lavish and extravagant and a careless life. Okay. That is one example. See, those three words by those are 
those people behind it, the writers behind it, how much influence they had. And then we have a, another revolution that happened about the, a uh, little before that, it was the American War of Independence. American War of Independence. Okay? So this will happen from 1775 to 1783. This is again another fact that we learn. And something that we learn from this is what? Again, here again you will find the the colonial powers or the imperialism of Britain being overthrown by the powers of the colonies. Alright? So, something that we have learned from this is a, a system of government. A government by the people Government of the people by the people. Government of the people by the people or the people. This is the definition of modern democracy. It's a government of the people. The representatives are representative of the people. They are there, they are elected to power. A, we talk about direct democracy is not practical, therefore indirect democracy is uh, that is uh, mostly practiced. And there, but it is they are representative elected to government. So therefore it is a government of the people and by the people. So everybody cannot be present in governing. So they send a, an elected representative to represent them to government. Alright? And the government work. And it is for the people. And the what is the concept of modern government? Government. Uh, government is the servant of the people. You are there to serve the people. Yes, sir. So that is sir, another great influence. Okay. So that's a, a system of a government uh, is thrown out and another new system of government established. Alright. Now, there was another great movement that happened uh, in the middle of the in the middle of the 18th century was so I think all must have heard of this as well industrial revolution. All right, industrial revolution that happened. Uh, now let's say it happened somewhere. Uh, 1762, where between a period of time, 1840 or 50. Alright, this refers to the uh, total transformation that happened uh, in the manufacturing process. Alright, with the invention of uh, uh, power loom, uh, with the invention of loom the invention of steam engine and uh, uh, with the invention of uh, hybrid crops and so on and all this happens that is that comes to the agricultural revolution but uh, so the when the industrial revolution what happened the process of production and transform changed and they required a large number of mass production started and a large number of labor was needed in the cities. 
and it is said that people swarm, swarms of people, or uh, people swarm to the cities from countryside or rural areas in in search of job. So this is a, a, a new development that happened uh, uh, with the impact of industrial revolution. And as a result, what happened? When you had a, a, a large force of working class, value well, was from there, a new term was developed. And what was that? So labor became a terminology. Labor. Right? Earlier the, the system in uh, Europe, most of the countries, especially in Britain, they followed the feudal system, a hierarchical order, which had the right on top, the aristocracy, then uh, you had the clerics, and then you had the um, merchants and the peasants. But there was no labor class. But a new class came into existence. A new class came into existence. And what happened when swarms of people came into London, for instance, in search of so a lot of, and they became a, 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 an epitome of the working class. What were they? They were half starved, half starved, underpaid, overworked, right? Half starved, underpaid, overworked masses. So they were termed as labor. They had no rights whatsoever. And it is at that time, in 1848, in 1848, a famous book was published, known as the Communist Manifesto. by a person known as Karl Marx. Karl Marx. Karl Marx published a book by the name The, Com the Communist Manifesto. And let me tell you what is, what uh, a change that brought about. A new system of government was established in the lines described in this uh, communist manifesto. And what is this? Uh, what is the uh, what impact it did have? The first impact it had was on the labor or on the working class population. Karl Marx, in his book The Das Capital, or in his book uh, The Communist Manifesto, he wrote Workers of the world unite. You have nothing to lose but your chains. So this was a new phenomenon that developed with the Industrial Revolution. With the Industrial Revolution, uh, you had swarms of people coming from uh, countryside, to the rural uh, England to the, its capital London. And uh, a new situation arose with the mass production, beginning of the mass production, a new factor of a production was added. And that was labor. So now, the factors of production was this new factor of production. But now this was a, a, a mass, a disorganized mass of people who were uh, overworked, Underpaid and half stacked. And this was the this was one of the lines that moved the labor. And now we have a, the labor is an organized uh, uh, organized concept where you have a the, uh, you have so many trade unions. This was the beginning of all the trade unions of the modern age. Right. So, unions that would fight for the rights of the labor, right, or the laborer, 
Okay. Now, so that was one of his great contributions. And besides that, with the coming of this uh, uh, Marxist philosophy, Marxist ideology, we have also developed a new system of government, the communist form of government, as opposed to the capitalist form of government. All right. So the entire globe was divided on two lines or into two two blocks as per as a capitalist block led by the the USA and the communist block led by the USSR. So we have uh, the uh, starting the, the philosophy behind it, it is Marxism and then we have uh, Stalin and uh, Lenin and uh, others who, who followed this uh, uh, principle, this new idea that was provided by Karl Marx and uh, so the establishment of a, a new system of government. It's a, a communism in it, itself is a utopian idea where all are to be equal, which is an impossible concept, but to some extent they practiced it. Like uh, for instance, George Bernard, uh, uh, George Orwell, for instance, made an observation in his book called The Animal Farm, where he makes a statement. He says, all are equal, but some are more equal than others. So that's a criticism of the communist form of government. Alright? Whereas the democracy is a, a system of government with checks and uh, balances, with the, it's this division of powers, uh, of uh, uh, executive, legislative, and uh, and uh, judiciary. Okay. So I was I was mentioning this in order to give you an idea, an idea of uh, how movements were started by writers or philosophers who, who are all part of this uh, uh, artist, okay? who are all artists. And then you have also now let's say uh, into the uh, reggae art for instance you have uh, the uh, great singer Bob Marley. Right? One of his, one of his uh, famous songs, okay, is uh, the of the now soldier. All right. Now this is a very inspirational, inspirational song that fights for the, or uh, uh, inspires uh, the black Americans to fight for their rights. And he mentions, mentions about their roots, their roots in uh, Africa, and who were traded from there and carried as slaves to work in the plantations in the USA. And they were treated as a slave state. And this is, uh, uh, so they had to fight year after year for the civil rights, to obtain civil rights. And the fight continued, and there are modern writers like Maya Angelou, who is also quite a, 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 a famous uh, uh, poet who writes. Uh, uh, and uh, poems asking the blacks to fight for their rights. Okay, now uh, uh, there are also other songs by him, like the uh, more popular ones, like No Women, No Cry, and so on. So, these are, I brought up these examples in order to show the power the artists uh, have 
over uh, in transforming the world. The theme of this particular poem is the transformative power of a power of a artist or art. All right. So having said this, we have seen. So the theme is uh, the tra transformative. That means the ability to change, to mold or to reshape, to build or to tumble, to destroy. Right. So that's what uh, this, uh, this particular poem is talking about. Now let's look at those of the poem proper. Okay, having said this. We are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams. Wandering by the lone sea breakers and sitting by desolate streams. World losers and world forsakers upon whom the pale moon gleams, yet we are the movers and shakers of the world forever it seems. With wonderful deathless duties, we build up the world's great cities and out of a fabulous story, we fashion an empire's glory. One man with a dream and pleasure shall go forth and conquer a crown and three with a new song's measure can trample an empire down. We in the ages flying, in the buried past of the earth, built in any way with our sign and Babel with itself with our mirth and all through them with prophesying to the world of a new world's world. For each age is a dream that is dying or one that is coming to birth. See? Wonderful lines. What a wonderful poem. We are the music makers. Who oh, are music makers? The musicians. Those who compose music. Those who sing music. Right? And this music stands for all art forms. Alright? In a painting or in sculpture or in a writing or in a singing, everything, in order to, everything is included. That's why I told you, it is an all-encompassing. That means it, it is inclusive, all-inclusive. Every artist, artist from every realm, from every, every segment is included in this. So we are the music makers, that is the musicians or the singers or those who compose music. And we are the dreamers of dreams. Look at those lines. These lines have become, these lines have become very, very popular and so used. And I told you, a couple of these lines uh, were sang in the, in the uh, 89th, 89th Academy Awards. Okay? All right. Wandering by lone sea breakers and sitting by desolate streams. Alright? We are the dreamers of dreams. What does that mean? The artists dream and build utopian, utopian worlds. It's the artists with their vision, with their dreams, they build the utopian worlds, abstract worlds. Right? Okay. And then, wandering by lone sea breakers and sitting by the summit streams. Wandering by, wandering by the summit streams. Now, what does this say about wandering by lone sea breakers and by the summit streams? What does this symbolize? This says the focus is on. In this couple of lines, the focus is on the desolation of a artist. Desolation of artist. Artists are they, they are uh, they are 
not people who stay aloof, stay aloof from the rest of the world. They remain solitary, wandering by lone sea breakers. Sea breakers are rigid structures erected on the uh, on the shores of sea in order to avoid erosion. So you find them walking on the seashores, all right, and lonely and sitting by desolate streams. Desolate means deserted, lonely streams by the riverside. Streams refers to brooks or rivers and so on, which are often lonely or deserted. And they walk around there. And what are they doing there? They are in search. They are in a in this artist. They are a soul searching. The artists are soul searching in their loneliness. Soul searching, wandering, wandering alone by sea breakers and by sitting by the streams. They are so 